Now, I said I wanted to talk about crime, and there's a very good reason uh, I wanted to talk about crime. It's because I think, you know, as I say, I keep saying this, I, I'm not one for generalisation. I think it is shockingly out of control in this country. We, we know all too well about the huge rise in shoplifting. At one point, advice was going out. Don't even bother reporting it. We now have the awful situation where store owners are being told if they're part of the chain, don't bother stopping people because of the risk you run. Violence is the answer to everything for many of these brutish thugs that carry out these crimes. Uh, crime is not just about shoplifting. It's happening on our trains. Um, very briefly, uh, some uh, close, close friends of my uh, wife, three young lads on a train from Stratford. Uh, it hadn't even left Stratford station. It was during the day. Three big fellas, not much older than them, got onto the train. Uh, and these guys were in an empty carriage at the time. Punched one of them in the face and then took their phones, demanded they opened their phones, took whatever cash they had. And frankly, a terrifying experience, right? You might not think so, but actually, if that happened to you, Pretty terrifying experience. These people walked off. They were wearing distinctive clothing. They could have been identified. Nothing happened. This is on a train in daylight. Where is the political will to understand that we should not be in a society where we sit on a train in broad daylight having to fear that people who come into that carriage might possibly be the sort of thugs, dangerous thugs that we have just seen, and be attacked, be robbed, and nothing happens, no accountability. Now, you will have other experiences, not necessarily personally, but of other people. If that is not crime out of control, what I've just described, what is? And that's before we talk about violent crime, before we talk assaults, rapes, murder knife crime. That's happening every day. And more often than not, um, you will know someone who has been a victim. Tell me your story. Tell me what you know and tell me what it's like where you live. We're not a London-centric programme here, but I will be talking to my next guest, Howard Cox, about this. But we want to hear from you, 0344 499 1000, or tweet me at Nick Dubois or at Talk TV. I did try and get the Mayor of London to come on, but once again, he's refused to do it. It is cowardly, actually, not to come on and talk about such an issue, crime particularly, when you are in charge of policing in this city. You, you set the strategy. And, and frankly, I'm disappointed. I don't like using language like that. But Sadiq Khan is not showing the sort of leadership by refusing to come on and talk to people on this show. And forget I'm a Tory or was a Tory MP and he's Labour. I would have anyone held to account for doing this. If Andy Street had this same problem and it was flagged up to me, he's a Conservative mayor of uh, Birmingham, I would be insisting he came down here and spoke to us. And if he didn't, I would call him out as well. But one person who I haven't had to call out is Howard Cox, leader of reform. He is a candidate. He wants to be the mayor of London. Good for him for coming on. By the way, just to show you how fair I'm being, I also asked Susan Hall, the Conservative candidate, to come on. She's too busy campaigning. If you can't take 10 minutes out from knocking on doors to come and talk about an issue like this, then uh, I think your press team are giving you bad advice. Howard Cox, welcome. Hello, Nick. I, I mean, what, what an introduction you've given about crime and how it's affected your family. I, I feel for you, and I'm, you know, and not being reported and not being followed up, I think uh, is absolutely heinous. It's absolutely terrible. You're not getting and it's service. everyday crime, isn't it? I mean, I had some thug um, uh, threaten me with a, 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 a threaten to stab me on a train about two years ago when I was coming to talk TV. And th the point is, I know violent crime's more shocking, Howard, but this is going on all the time. And look at these tube figures. What's your reaction? to the tube figures showing a 75% increase in crime in two I, years. Well, I feel very sick about it. And one reason, everyone knows uh, that I'm standing because I'm a, a motoring campaigner. I'm standing about the ULES situation and the traffic and all the thing issues. But the biggest thing for me is crime. That, that's why I'm standing. I've got a daughter of 31 who refuses now to go walk around London. And she lives in Alpington, but she goes and sees her friends in central London on the train, on tubes, and, uh, across his London. And she will not come back now uh, after eight or nine o'clock. She used to go stay out till one o'clock in the morning. Now she will not do that. And you made your point, but I've had a personal situation only last week. I was actually coming from another 
uh, channel media. And I was walking back. Uh, How dare and you? I, uh, yes, yes. Sorry about that. And I was coming up in the in the uh, Charing Cross Underground station and just coming up onto the platform of the overground. And the person came t towards me. I was carrying my laptop, which is, was actually around my neck and around my body. And they tried to rip it off of me. It pushed me over. Um, and another guy tried to pull as well. And I managed to get up and push away. And they ran away because mm. I was helped by a young lad who actually well, recognised good for him. Yeah, I did. I, I, well, I, I've got his number. I said, thank you. And I, I spoke to uh, uh, one of the uh, 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 ticket collectors. says, where's the nearest transport policeman? Is he around? He said, oh, we haven't seen one of those for a week. Now, it's interesting because uh, after my uh, little summation there, Steve from Stoke uh, has decided to make a, 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 a party political point. He said, yes, violence is increasing in society massively and the scum have realised trains are a good place to commit crime. Yet your party, i.e. Conservative Party, wants to get rid of guards on trains. I'm a driver and guess what? When I'm doing over 100 miles an hour, I can't be looking at what's happening on the train. Well, my point there is no one is asking Steve to do it, but actually I don't think a, a guard is it should necessarily have to take his life in his hands. We should have transport police and a higher presence of transport police, surely. Absolutely right. And one of the things on my policies is Stan is London, Mary in London. And it, I know this is a national TV station, but I think this should roll out across the country is uh, is we've got to get the police actually dealing with crime rather than sitting behind the desk, uh, pu pushing paper and pressing buttons and policing people on Twitter. We've got to get them actually going back to actually doing what it should be doing, which is policing. And one of the things I want to do is in introduce things called police access points. And which what, what is that? Well, fundamentally, in all 24 outlets, it could be supermarkets, it could be McDonald's, it could be uh, all sorts of places, but to all 24 outlets, they would have a manned police station, a, a, a police booth area with all the facilities, all computer access, and you could go into there and report something, or you can go in there and take, uh, uh, get solace. The important thing here is I, it, they're going to say, how are you going to pay for that? Well, I think those businesses will pay for it because they want to stop shoplifting and violence in their own premises, and it'll be a good... You know, oh, I feel safe coming in here because there's a policeman in here. And that's the sort of thing I want to do. I want to triple the number of bobbies on the beat and I'm going to look at transport police. I've already put in a freedom of information request and I must congratulate the uh, Lib Dem for this, so who actually put a freedom of information to get the information about 75% increase. They're not getting good press at the moment, the Lib Dems, as we know. Yeah. But fundam fundamentally, they put the FOI request in, Nick, and they got this information out. And they beat me just slightly to it. I've got some other questions I've asked. Well, for. Uh, that, that's good. but and, and, you know, good for them for getting the figures. But if I'm brutally honest, around the world crime is spiralling. There's no question of that. I can't think of any countries you may where it's been tackled successfully on going down. I, I mean, I was pickpocketed in Rome. I caught the little thug as it happens, which was a great pleasure to me as I slung him off the train. Um, right. You know, but this is Rome. Barcelona has pickpocket problems galore, as well as street crime, street robbery. Um, you know, I could go on. But so, yes, policing our way out of the problem, I guess that's a challenge, Howard, and we, it's, it's a right response to have. But, you know, what else should we be trying to tackle to kind well, of get I, it in people's heads that this is not an acceptable way forward? Well, I think our society, and you, uh, you've rightfully highlighted that, I think we've, we've got to get the politicians actually talking less confrontary. It's got to be, there's too much division. We've seen it. In the case of the London mayor, which is, he, he's not fit for purpose, and the one reason why I'm standing, I, you know, it took me three months to say yes to Richard Tice, I'm going to stand as London mayor. Um, and one of the reasons was on the crime thing. But it's time we've got to stop this division. We've got this whole thing with the Palestinians and the Jews in London. You saw what's happening. I've heard you talking about it with Henry Bolton and that sort of thing. The, the problem we've got is we've got too much division and it's being accelerated by politicians. We've got to start talking to people, listening to people and working with people. So when, people, when I, people look, I'm, I'm probably going down a road that I really shouldn't because I, I'm, I, I don't know how many people will be interested in this aspect. But the fact for me is there is a huge loss of just some basics in people, a lack of respect for property, a lack of courtesy. Uh, you know, these things, it all starts from a sense of entitlement. I'm, I'm an 18 year old, I deserve to have that phone that person's got over there, rather than think, how can I save up? What can I do to get one? I'll go and nick it. I mean, well, this, this well, worries no, no. me. Nick, Nick well, then we've got to go back to the state of education. 
what are they learning at schools in terms of respect when i grew up i'm you know i'm, I'm in my 70th year but we actually role play things like you know going to a shop and buying things saying thank you please sir opening the doors for people and helping people oh. uh, i was i also did things like going help old age pensioners i am one now <laughs> going across the road that sort of thing that we don't see that at the moment i don't see people getting up in trains for people no now. that's true i do actually um uh, still do that uh, and uh, and it's always appreciated generally funny enough look uh, this is real old man talk so uh, 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 this this is this is uh, quite quite amusing in some senses because uh, i i ask people when you're out walking on a pavement just count how many times someone will move to get out of your way as opposed to you moving to get out of everyone else's way. Oh, Nick, this is a real thing. I can't believe how you're saying this. I'm often walking down the road and up coming t towards me, there's three people, young yeah, yeah. people, all on their Younger than you, room. let's just keep it me. at that, yes. Yeah, it doesn't matter, that sort of thing. And I, I deliberately stay by position now, so they walk and they go, look at me, oh, they're completely oblivious. They don't have empathy with their surroundings. Yeah. And that's the problem. But, but it's also just about courtesy. Now, look. We're not going yes. to solve crime by educating people, but I do passionately believe we have stopped teaching and, and, and advising people on personal responsibility and civic responsibility. Everyone is about, it's my right to walk on this pavement, and if you don't get out of my way, I'm going to barge you with my elbow. That's the prattish sort of behaviour I come across. But we're getting that also in other things. So I'm going back to the division thing. Little things like cyclists and motorists. This has been exacerbated by uh, Sadiq Khan. I, you get off the train cross, I walk down, you know the word, down to Whitehall, down to Westminster. I must count, what, 50 cyclists, cycles on the pavement. Yeah. Those sorts of things. And these are young people mainly, young, fit people, and they were going in between people. And you could see, and I caught one guy once, I managed to stop it. He was about to rip a handbag off a, a, a woman's shoulder. I managed to get just before he did it. But that's the sort of thing. And I do believe there is a political a uh, requirement now for all politicians to start talking much more in terms of actually respect. They don't, I mean, the attacks on personal attacks, I mean, you've been in Parliament, you know that. You. I don't remember once you attacking anyone personally. Yeah, and I, exactly. and I, watch your, I watch your career. Exactly. It's all about respect. OK, listen, Howard, we could talk for hours on this. The fact of the matter is, under Mayor Khan, crime has escalated. Howard, good luck. Uh, I will be inviting your candidates back, uh, your opponents, to come on the show. But so far, you pretty much dominate the airways here because they haven't been coming on. That was Howard Cox, Reform Party candidate, talking about crime. And we did move into some social issues that I think lead to criminal behaviour.